Hi, I'm Byron Collins of Collins Epic War Games, publisher of Polyversal by Ken Whitehurst. I want to welcome you to this quick gameplay and combat demo of Polyversal. For this demo, I'll be using the print and play components as you can see here. You can download these yourself from our project page. For this print and play demo, we're going to use several combatants for each side. One is a wolf bite, which is a light recon vehicle. Another is an Insagon main battle tank. And finally, a Dragonfly main attack VTOL. As you can see, we've also added three each of various die types. D4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Each die type is color coded to an effectiveness counter as you, as you can see here. Here we have borders tokens. This represents fire for effect. And this represents advance. There are many more orders in the full version of the game. This just gives you a flavor for how the game works. I've also got a few tracking tokens for whether a unit is out of, out of fuel, takes a fuel hit, or is immobilized, or loses a weapon, or if the unit takes stress. I've also added some miniatures here. As you can see, we've got the dragonflies, and then we've got these Insagon tanks, wolf bite, and an opposing recon vehicle. For the opponent, I've added some Typhark tanks from Plasma Blast just to show some differentiation in the units. You'll also need a tape measure in inches and a place to play. So for this, I've created this cityscape terrain to help show off some of the buildings we're offering with the Kickstarter as well from the Phalanx Consortium. Each player will separate the miniatures out and take tiles corresponding to those miniatures. The orders tokens can also be split apart. Let's take a quick look at the combatant tile. This tile is the core of the game. This tells you everything you need to know about a unit that's in play. Combatants are represented by these tiles. So you may have multiple identical combatants represented by a single unit. The units are then arranged together, that's why they're hexagonal, in order to form battle groups. Battle groups will have a designated command unit. In this case, for both players, the Insagon will be the command unit. Command units give orders to all units in their command, as long as they're able to do so. There's various rules to cover how to determine that, and we're going to kind of skip some of those for now, just so we can get playing. But the basic stats of each tile are as follows. You've got the title, the type of unit, the movement value in inches, the die type for targeting, D10 in this case, the die type for assault, which is a D8, the evasion statistic, that's how hard it is to hit, and then a, a list of weapons, if any. In this case, um, we've got a plasma gun, and then the weapon class is three. Missiles, class two, pulse lasers, um, one on each side of the tank. The quantity of each weapon is also listed. In addition to quantity, is the firing arc. For example, missiles are 360 degrees, they can fire in any direction. But the pulse lasers are limited to the left side and right side, respectively. The range in inches is also provided, as well as the anti-personnel, anti-tank, and anti-aircraft values, which are all die types. If, if able to hit those types of units. But finally, the damage that each weapon does is listed on the far right. In addition to the weapons list, you also have a damage track. If a unit get, gets hit in the game, you would consult the damage track to determine any effects. As you can see here, I've separated the units into two battle groups, one for each player. The Insagon is the command unit in each battle group. So generally we put the command unit central to the other units that are attached to it. The other units can be attached on any of the hexagonal sides of the command unit. Each unit has an effectiveness rating. Don't worry about how these are assigned. Uh, in the main game we'll, we'll cover that. But this, for this demo, we provide you that the command unit begins with a yellow, or D8 effectiveness. 
I'm going to place this D8 effectiveness counter on the unit. The Wolf Bite Recon units begin with the D6, and the VTOL begins with the D10. Effectiveness is a very key stat of the game. As units play and take hits and damage, the effectiveness may drop, which will essentially take them out of the battle without even potentially destroying them. As you can see, I've also placed one player's units at the edge of a quadrant in our city. I placed the other units fairly close by, just for the purposes of this demo. Each game turn consists of four phases. Phase one is issuing orders. To place an order, you'll place an orders token face down on each combatant tile. This order is advance, which is a fairly common order. That lets me fire and then move, or move and then fire. I'm going to place an advance token face down on the command unit. I'm also going to do that for the other two units. I'll do the same for the other player, just to keep it simple. Players, of course, place these orders in secret in a real game. Once placed, the order cannot be changed and applies to all combatants within the unit. Phase two is to determine initiative. Each player basically chooses a command unit. If you've got multiple battle groups, you'll pick one of your battle groups, look at your command unit, and the command unit's current effectiveness. You're basically going to face off between commanders. This will continue until the turn is done. So basically for player one, which I'm calling it, um, the top guy here, player one will roll a d8, which is a four result, player two, a six. The winner of initiative, in this case player two, activates the difference in the rolls. The difference of six and four is two, and so player two will get to activate two units out of its battle group. Phase three is to activate units. In order to activate units, and execute their orders, you're going to choose a unit, flip the orders token over to reveal it, and then you accomplish that order for all combatants in that unit. Now we're going to skip to combat, because I want to show you how that works and how simple it is in Polyversal. So I've activated this Dragonfly unit and moved it to within a position where it can attack this Insagon tank. I've also broken out these combatant tiles just for reference of what's fighting at what. So remember the Dragonfly has an effectiveness of D10, and the Incigon has an effectiveness of D8. That's one of the three dice that's rolled in every combat. The first step in firing is to select a target. So you have to, if you have multiple combatants in the same unit, they all have to select and announce their targets for each firing weapon before rolling dice. In order to perform a direct fire attack, the combatant must have a target within its weapon range, line of sight, and firing mark. To check that, use a tape measure for the weapon range. My auto cannon has a range of 10, and that's well within 10. The missiles have a range of 20, well within 20. The firing arc is a frontal 180, which I can easily see is within 180 degrees. Line of sight for aircraft to vehicles on the ground is unblocked in this case. So um, now what you do is roll to hit. For each attack, again, you roll three dice. The targeting die, which is the targeting ability of the unit uh, combatant itself, which is a D8. The current effectiveness of the unit, which can change in the game, a D10. And then the weapon-specific die type. In this case, firing at a tank, I use the AT value for the autocannon, a D4. We'll get to missiles in a second. So we're going to resolve the autocannon first. And let's just say we're one-on-one -on -one here. One combatant against one target. The autocannon will fire. I'm going to roll three dice together. What I need to check is the sum of these three dice. Six, four, and three is my result. That total is 13. The evasion statistic of the Insagon tank is a 13. And just to show you that right here, there's what you check. So what that means is, I, I did not exceed that evasion statistic. I needed a 14 in order to hit the Inscon tank. So the, I, I missed effectively with the autocannon. So the autocannon attack is complete. Now I'm going to move on to the missiles. Now missile quantity for this particular uh, unit is 4. 
Firing linked weapons, you can do that in a couple of ways. One is you can fire them all at once against a single target, and you can basically get a bonus on your AT value up to a maximum of D12. Or you can fire them individually, even at individual targets within the same unit. So in this case, since I've got one combatant uh, target, I'm going to fire them all at once. So all four missiles are going in one shot. That will increase my die type of the anti-tank value. Normally a D10, it'll go up to the maximum of D12. So I'm going to fire, again, three dice. D8 is my targeting ability. D10 is my current effectiveness. And the missile's value with the linked fire bonus is going to be D12. I'm going to roll all three. The sum of these dice, again, is checked against the evasion value of the Insegon. So here I've got 21 as the sum. 21 is compared against the evasion of 13, that's greater than that value. So I hit with the missiles. Now, I look at the damage that those missiles do. In this case, the missiles on the Dragonfly do medium-low damage. What that means is, I'm going to use the medium value of the three dice. So for example, if I'm showing 6, 7, and 8, which I am, I'm going to use the 7 value as my damage. 7 is compared against the Insegon's damage track. So I take a look at the unit, and again look at the track on the bottom. 7 corresponds with a S for stress effect. So what you do is, as a unit, even though one combatant got hit, as a unit, the unit takes stress. Stress is bad. As stress builds throughout the game, it can lead to drops in the effectiveness of the unit as a whole. Okay, so my missile attack is now done. And with that, his order, which if you remember was advance, in this case I moved and then fired, his order is now complete. This is how all combat works in Polyversal. A simple roll of three dice, targeting, effectiveness, and a weapon specific value. That single roll tells you everything you need to know from whether you've hit the target to how much damage you did and any additional effects of that damage. Very simple to do. Damage effects on the damage tracks vary from losing weapons to taking stress to having an armor hit or no effect at all to actually destroying the combatant itself. There's also fuel leaks, immobilization. There's a variety of, of effects that can happen that are built right into the unit's tile. After the initiative winner activates the delta of units between that initiative roll, between the commanders facing off, you return to a face-off of initiative, phase two. You would select a battle group, pick the commander, and face off again with an initiative roll. Again, the, the winner of that roll activates the delta of that roll as far as his units in that battle group. You would continue to do this until all units have had their orders activated for this turn. Once that's done, you go to the end phase. If any units for the sprint and play demo have taken at least two stress tokens, the effectiveness die type will actually drop by one die type. So for example, if the Enzagon took another couple of hits of stress that turn, the die type would drop down to a D6 for the next turn. That affects his ability to command units in the full game, and it also, of course, affects every combat role that the unit does. For the print and play demo, the end phase checks victory conditions as well. The demo game ends when one side has lost its command unit, in this case, either Insagon, or when either player surrenders. We hope you've enjoyed this quick introduction to Polyversal's gameplay and combat. This is a very simple intro. Know that the full rules do cover a lot more aspects of combat and gameplay. There are a lot more orders, damage effects, and a lot of variety in the units. In fact, the unit variety is unlimited. Using the combatant design tool, the tiles that you're playing with can be tiles that you've created yourself and customized for this game. Remember that everything that's 6mm is compatible with Polyversal, so you really never know what your opponent is going to bring to the table. When you're playing the full game, a points-based system will balance everything out and keep everything fair among players.